Hey, what's up you guys? It's your boy Rashawn here coming at you with another screen recorded video. I hope you guys uh, like and subscribe my content. Each video is going to be better than the last. That's the goal here. I want them to get better and better and better and better and get more and more deeper into this uh, subject matter at hand. So uh, right now I'm just doing my Foundations of Success videos. Uh, if you were watching this, you've probably been referred to this <laughs> by the future me. Uh, future me, like somebody, uh, I probably told you, uh, go back to season one. <laughs> you know, that that's going to be my little thing for my little channel that I'm going to coin, where I tell new people that come in and don't know my stuff or whatever, and uh, they're asking a whole bunch of questions and all this stuff. I'm going to say, go back to season one. Oh, wait, let me look at the camera when I say that. Go back to season one. I don't know if that looks crazy or not, or... Whatever, but um, hopping up into this uh, subject matter, um, today I'm going to be talking about the importance of confidence. Confidence, 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 confidence. You have to have confidence in this world if you're going to do anything, bro. If you're going to do anything, anything. I, I can't see, you know, I can't see anybody being motivated to do anything if they have no confidence. You know, like. For example, uh, I'm just going to use my experience to talk about this. Like on some little small stuff, on a small level of uh, interaction, I'm going to see if I can uh, kind of relate to, you know, everyday people. Uh, I know everyone doesn't have a car or a vehicle, uh, but I, okay, I would say people have a key of some sort, right? Say, uh, well, everybody knows what a car is. I can use the car example. Okay, let's use the car example. So um, say you have a car, right? Or someone you know has a car. And they have a job and they have to be at a job at a certain time. Let's say uh, you have to be at work at what, nine? Okay, let's say you be at work at nine o'clock in the morning. So you have this job and you have to be there at nine o'clock in the morning and you have a vehicle and you know to get you back and forth to work. It's supposed to be a, a form of reliable transportation that you put down on your job uh, pro profile or uh, on your resume or whatever you want to say when they, uh, or your application when they, uh, when you, uh, you know, write your information down and they ask you, do you have reliable transportation? And if so, what kind of transportation is that? They ask that question in some shape or form to uh, be able to do that. Um, going deeper into this, uh, okay, you say your car, what makes your car uh, reliable? What makes a car reliable? Because cars break down, they catch flats, they have all sorts of issues. They have all these things. What makes a vehicle reliable? You know, and, and certain brands of vehicles is more reliable than other brands of, of vehicles. You know, like a Honda is more reliable than a Toyota, so uh, so to speak, so on and so forth. But uh, not going to get into the brands of cars and all that. Not going to get too deep into it. I'm just going to keep it car. Um, basically, what makes something reliable is basically it's a big part it's not all of it but it's how confident you are that it's gonna do what you think it's gonna do or it's gonna do what it should be doing so uh, you write your car down as reliable transportation because you believe that if you get up in the morning and you put your key in the ignition and everything's right in your car you got gas in there you know your your, your starter is right everything's right that when you crank that car, it's going to be able to successfully bring you from your home, which is point A, to point B, which is your place of work. And you're going to believe that it's able to do that reliably at least five times a week. And, uh, you know what I'm saying, five times a week for uh, back and forth, let's say commuting, let's say about 30 minutes, 45 minutes back and forth to work reliably. So to you, it's reliable. It's you have confidence in this vehicle that is going to be able to basically um, take you from point A to point B. But what, what makes you so confident into this uh, to this vehicle? Well, a good precursor, I mean, a good way to build confidence is seeing what something successful before. And what it is is, well, shoot, the car, you know, every time I stuck the key in the ignition and crunk it up, the car always crunk. And when I hit the gas, the car always goes. And and then when I hit the brakes, the car always stops. You know, it just it is, has always done it in the past. You know what I'm saying? So I don't see why, you know, why I won't continue to do it, you know. So you can't see something, you know what I'm saying, potentially 
it's harder for you to see if something could go, you know, that, that, that it's harder for you to see failure when you've seen success so much. It's like, it's, it's very difficult to see that. So when you crank the car up, you think it's going to go. You crank the car up, you think it's going to go. And it has done that, and you're very confident. And, and we all know that, right? But what happens when you get up, you know what I'm saying, and, and you got to be at work at 9 o'clock, and uh, it's 8.30, it takes you 20 minutes to get to work, so you wake up at like 8 o'clock, and you know, you get your breakfast, and it takes you 30 minutes to get dressed, and you know, and all this stuff. So let, let's say you... Uh, you, you 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 leave out the house at 8.40 and you get in your car. It's about a 20-minute ride. You crank up your car and your car don't crank. You crank up your, your car and you go and then the tire gets flat, you know, or whatever. You know, whichever uh, case it may be. So it's like now this confidence you had and this, this image of this idea of something being reliable in your mind has now fucked you. <laughs> so, you know, for lack of a better terminology uh, at the time. Um, so now you're in the situation to where you're about to be late for work because this car didn't crank out how it should have. And now you got to figure out an alternative to get to work because you were so confident that this car was going to crank up and take you to work that day because it has many times before. And I'm going to tell you something that, that that's going wrong there and, and, and why uh, confidence is a very, 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 very. And I know I watched the video on saying very. Stop saying very. Let's see. Uh, let's see if I can use something else that's not very because uh, let, let's see. Quite indubitably. <laughs> No, I'll trip over now. But uh, it is really. Nah, that's used a lot too. Okay, I'm just going to skip up over. It, it, it's a big deal, okay? It's a big deal. It's a big deal. It's really important to understand, to have a very. There I go again. Damn, I can't stop saying very. Oh, I need to work on that. Oh, I got an issue. Uh oh. I got an issue. I got to work on that, y'all. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, going back to it, it's very important. See, I did it again. God damn. Keep saying Barry. Can I, can I go through this video without saying Barry? Let's see that. Let's see that. Let's see that. Or very or really. Let's see if I can do that. Very or really. Hold on. I got to pause for a second because I got to think of something. <laughs> I got to think of something to replace those words. Sorry, y'all. One second. One second. Okay. Okay. I have to up my vocabulary real quick because <laughs> I've been so used to talking down here that I have to bring it back up to up here. All right, so um, and I had to think about it and really think about it. I use Google, I promise. I swear I use Google. Um, it is imperative and of, of great importance or of great service to you to be able to have a healthy dose of confidence. Not too much, not too little. You need to have it right in there and right in between that middle. That middle way, that middle right there. All right, so. All right. Because having, the, the, and, and you're in this, uh, now now you're at a deficit, right? So Because uh, you got to be at work in 20 minutes or you're late, but the car isn't working like it should. No matter uh, what's wrong with it, you just know something's wrong and it's not doing what it's always done before. So now you're in this deficit situation. This is a situation of you're overconfident. You didn't leave room for error. Uh, so when you had an error, it basically uh, screwed your whole situation up. Now you're at a deficit. You're in a bad situation to where you're going to look bad at everyone else because now their confidence is you and you has gone down because what they're witnessing is, let's say you've never been late for work really and you show up late to work. So now they're looking at you like, it's not like, uh, let's use me for example. It's not like Rashawn to be late to work. So, but he's late. Yeah, he, he is late, George. <laughs> you know, so he's late. Huh, I wonder what happened to him. But, you know, they might be worried or whatever, you know, versus somebody who always shows up to work late. They're like, motherfucker, late to, again, late again. I'm thinking about cutting this person. Or, or, I, or if they're a creative boss, they might say, you know what? Let's say I need this person. 
at 5 o'clock. He always comes up about 30, 40 minutes late. Let's say I schedule him to be at work at 4.30. Since I know he's reliably late for work, uh, at least 30 minutes, you know, when you, you know, when you show so he's actually going to show up at the time that I need him to show up because I'm confident that he's going to be late. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? When somebody's confident in you because you've done it before in the past. And that's how just how people are. And it's a good rule of thumb to, uh, to compare the past to the present to kind of predict the future. And that's a, and that's something that everybody at all levels do. But let me bring it back because I want to go back to my original point. So let's bring it back. Let me back to you. It's not like you to be late to work or me to be late to work. So they lose confidence when I'm late to work. So now it's becoming, so now what I'm doing is this, I'm hurting my credibility. So my credibility goes down. And so it's like, well, he's never really late. It's not like him to be late for work. So now it goes from that to, okay, it's like him to be late to work sometimes. <laughs> so, so now it's never late for work to late to work sometimes. And then it goes from late to work sometimes to late to work occasionally, late to work, you know, occasionally to do this motherfucker always late to work. <laughs> you know, so it, it, it is bad to be late for work, but now you're in a situation and this is assuming that it's not your fault, but it is your fault because you as an individual, and that, that's another thing, confidence, ties in with accountability and all this stuff. And if you have too much confidence, you know, it, it can affect what other areas of your life, which is accountability. So now uh, I'm not going to talk about accountability. I'm just going to stick on the fact that you did not leave room for error because you not, you did not think that something was going to go wrong with this particular thing or item or situation. And it did. And you did not prepare yourself because you were too confident. So being too confident in yourself, this is like a uh, just a base level thing. I'm not trying to do nothing too drama filled or too nothing, nothing too crazy. You just stick with something like a car. So, something as simple as a car can have such a deeper, deeper uh, meaning than what uh, most people would think. Most so it's, and I say it's overconfidence because damn dude, you don't think a car is gonna break down? You know what I'm saying? And someday, you know what I'm saying, you don't think a car is going to break down? Well, another question. So now that you're in this situation and now you're late to work and now you've hurt your credibility because you did not leave room for error, say you would have left like maybe an hour. Say you normally get up an hour before. Uh, say you get in your car an hour before you have to get to work or an hour and a half before you have to get to work. So now you're in your car and something goes wrong. It's not like you got to be there in 20 minutes. You, you, because you got up an hour and a half early or an hour early. So you have an hour and 10 minutes or 90 minutes. If I'm doing that math right, hold on. That's like off the top of my head math, but let's just stick with the 110 for now. Say you get up an hour and a half early and it take you 20 minutes to uh, go and get to work. So 20 minus an hour and 30 leaves you for an hour and 10 minutes. So now you have an hour and 10 minutes to fix this error to make things right, to figure out an alternative way. I don't know, call an Uber, catch the bus, call a friend, whatever it is. If you have friends that could, that are able to get up that early in the morning and take you there. So now, you know, because you were confident that this car can get you back to work, but you also understood that someday this vehicle isn't going to be able to do that. So you're not very confident at the same time versus being too underconfident. Like, damn, man, this car, car might break down on me. This car might break down on me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're just thinking doomsday, like, shoot, man, I don't want to ride over there without, you know, having a tow truck number or having the money for a tow truck and all this stuff and because uh, the car might break down on me or I don't really want to hit the brakes too hard because the brakes might fail. And You know what I'm saying? And, and it's very safe. It's a very safe way of thinking, but you have to have some confidence because you are the driver and you are the one behind the wheel. So having confidence is is imperative. It's imperative, man. It's imperative. Let's go ahead 
because if other people don't see that you're a confident person or if other people don't see that you believe in what the hell you're talking about, they're not going to buy what you're selling. So if you're telling somebody you saw an alien or something and whatever, and, and or, or not even just alien, I don't even want to go that extra abstract. Let's say you're speaking to someone about a particular subject matter that you want them to believe. And you're speaking to this person and it's practical, it's practical, it's, it's a practical subject, but they're ignorant to the subject. And you want to tell them about the subject. If you're not confident in what you're saying and the other person picks up on that, they're not going to believe what you're saying. They might be nice about it. They might be whatever about it. And ultimately, they're not going to be convinced. And then you have some people where you're, you're confident about it. And then you're like, you're so confident about it that you don't see nothing can go wrong with what you're saying. You can't see the error. They call it confirmation bias because you're so confident and you, it has worked before in the past, but you don't know why it's worked or why something's working. Because because it's under it's, it's uh, that's where that level of insight comes in. When I was talking about in the last video, you need to understand both sides of the fence. You need to understand why something works, why it doesn't work. You need to understand. Uh, yeah, that's pretty. I already said it. You got to understand why something is winning and why something is losing. Okay, it won. They, they won. Why did they win? They lost. Why did they lose? The the card can get me to get me to work on time. Uh, yes, it can, but why didn't it get me to work on time? It could have been that you failed, make, you know, you failed to maintain your car. Uh, in in the case that something did go wrong, did you save the money? To uh, did you save the money for the vehicle? In case something go wrong, like do you have? Five, they have this question going around. Do you have five hundred bucks uh, in case an emergency uh, comes up? Most people don't have five hundred dollars if an emergency comes up. So. If five hundred dollars, if you need five hundred dollars, you know what I'm saying, and and uh, most people don't have five dollars, five hundred dollars, most people would be fucked. So since you're a little bit less confident, then, then then you know, if you're a little bit less confident, you'll be more prepared. So the less confidence you have, the more prepared you will be for a situation, or you should be. Because if you're confident that something's not going to work, you're not just going to sit there and take the L. Normally, you figure out some other kind of way. So now you're in a situation to where you're thinking now. You're now in a thinking mindset. This is why I spent the last 17 and a half minutes talking about this stuff. This is the juice right here towards the end. I always start out cold in the beginning, and then towards the middle, I'm, I'm, I'm grinding, I'm talking on something, and then towards the end, I got that good point. And this good point is right here in my head, is to be able to be prepared. Because it, everything doesn't work all the time. Sure, it works some of the time or most of the time or maybe damn near all the time. But nothing works all of the time. And for the times that it does not work, you need to be prepared. Having confidence is not a bad thing. Having confidence in yourself is not a bad thing. Understanding that success brings confidence. If you see, if you shoot a basketball and... and you brick, it, sh it knocks your confidence down. If you shoot a basketball and you hit, the, you make the shot, your confidence goes up. And the more shots that you make, it's like a trade-off. The more shots that you make, the more confident you will be. And the less that you make, the less confident that you make. So if you threw bricks all the time on free throws in basketball, you're not going to really want to, somebody say you got to go to the free throw line, you ain't really trying to go out there in front of all them people and they're shooting them free throws because you're not confident that you're going to make the shots, especially if the game's on the line, you're going to end up, you know what I'm saying, you, you know, you, you don't want to be in that situation because you're not confident. And the thing is, in, in being confident, you got some people that are confident that they can do it despite how trash they are. You have, but man, I could talk on this subject for the longest. There's so many different types of confidence. Oh, uh, I'm not sure I'm already... Do I really want to go that deep into it? Hmm. No, not really. Not really. I don't want to go that deep into it. Uh, let's just save it, you know what I'm saying, for later and uh, do it for future videos. But just a foundation. You have to have confidence. If you want to beat homelessness, if you want to get out your parents' house, if you want to be... Uh, 
I want to use this word with a grain of salt because it's a buzzword. If you want to be independent, okay, if, if you want to be independent, you know, you have to have confidence. Have to have confidence. Because if you don't have confidence, you're going to, you, you're just going to count yourself out before, you know what I'm saying, you even get a chance. And that's another thing. That's actually one of my weaknesses that I actually want to bring out. Uh, and I'm, that I'm working on and I'm, you know, building, you know, more and more confidence, especially when it comes to, to, let's say, yeah, especially when it comes to women, for example, you know, I, I, I do the research and I see, uh, other dudes as well as, you know, post and all this stuff for how much dudes get shot down and they get shot down, you know, trying to talk to all these different girls and all this stuff. And. They get embarrassed, they get all this stuff, they get roasted or whatever if they look too bad to the girls or whatever. And I see people get shot down and I see this stuff and it makes me less confident because it's like, damn, you shot, you shot him down, you shoot me down too. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever. And these girls just rejecting dudes, rejecting these dudes, playing with these dudes, doing all this stuff. And these dudes are really out here trying to find a significant other and people get cheated on, people doing all this stuff. And I'm just seeing a whole bunch of negative stuff and a whole bunch of negative outcomes and it makes me less confident whenever I see a girl who I, that I might like or I might want to approach. And what it is is, you know, sometimes I look at a girl and by knowing the stuff that I know about women and I see certain red flags and see certain moves and all this stuff. And, I, and, and, I, and you know, I'm, I'm comparing myself to, the, uh, to, the, to what I know for a fact. I end up counting myself out and I'd be like, oh shit, she this, she that, she that. She thinks she this or she probably gonna do that, this, that, and the third. And next thing you know, I done counted myself out before she even got a chance to count me out. So I would have never known if she would have said yes or no. So, and I thought about that and I realized that you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take at the free throw line. You miss all of them because you never even tried. You know, since I realized that, I said, fuck it, I'm not gonna count myself out. I'm not gonna do deny myself the opportunity like that. So I was at the uh, Golden Corral one time, and I seen this girl, you know, light skinned chick, big booty girl with light skin. I really liked her. She seemed nice. Uh, I spoke to her. She was able to keep a conversation. Whatever, you know, she was, you know that was my type of girl, or I thought that was you know my type of girl, or whatever. And you know, I shot my shot. And you know, and in the back of my head, there was that unconfidence man she about to shoot you down man she ain't stunning you bro you know, da, 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 da. i said fuck it the, am i you know because i thought about me on my deathbed right and i was like you know if i get on my deathbed the last thing that i want to be able to the last thing that i want to come to my mind if ever is to say man i should have or what could have happened if, you know, or I wonder about, you know, and all this stuff, I don't, I don't want to have regrets on my deathbed. So it's not like I'm a YOLO type of person. And for those who don't know, it's like YOLO means you only live one life, so on and so forth. It's not that. It's more so of like, you know, just take a damn chance. It goes back into risk, like I'll say. You never know how something's going to turn out until you shoot the shot. So... I shot my shot and I got a number and I told her to hit me up when she got off work. She hit me up when I got off work and we were talking for a little bit and you know, I really like this girl and uh, I guess she liked me in the beginning, but she started liking me less and less and then I started peeping that and then, you know, I started seeing certain things she said and then I started liking her less and less because now I'm starting to see the thing and then she stopped replying to me altogether and, but if she missed the date that she set up for us to actually meet up in person, like you set this date up, not me, you know, she doesn't, if, I'm not about to be out there looking crazy and none of this stuff. I'm going to be like, just in case. And I already did this. I said, you know, uh, hey, I'm trying to see if we're still on for such and such date. Uh, if I don't get a response or anything by, you know, I put a reasonable amount of time on there, you know, she has like about 24 hours to respond, really. If I don't really hear it by this time tomorrow, you know what I'm saying, I'm not, I'm just going to assume that you're no longer interested and I'm going to go on with my life. You know, that's how I did it. I didn't have to type all that, probably shouldn't have typed all that or whatever, 
But I just want to be known, you know, what I'm going to be doing. Like, I'm not about to sit up here and wait on you or sit up here and play these games or whatever. But see, the point is, it's not about that situation. It's not about what happened afterwards. Because now I know where the path leads me, you understand, versus me wondering what could have happened or counting myself out, you know, before it happened. Because that could have led to something. It still could lead to something. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not overly confident about it. I'm not underly confident about it. If that's it, um, yeah, and I'm not, I'm not tripping on it if it's not, and I'm not tripping on it if it is, you know. So I'm not googly eyed. I'm not, you know, too. I'm right in between. I'm watching with a stable mind. You have to be that because you need to think about well, shit. If something goes wrong, what are you gonna do? If something goes right, what are you gonna do? And you need to always be in this mindset because it's a very, very healthy mindset to have. It prepares you for all the trials and tribulations of life. And you need to think about this stuff. Most people don't think about their future. A lot of people do that hope and pray stuff. God gonna make it right. God gonna do this, this and a third. And some people just never think about it. Eh, well, you know, I never really thought about it. Or oh, I'm just gonna go to college and I'm just gonna get my uh, degree and uh, you know name some useless degree here. And it's never actually the good degree that's actually gonna get you somewhere. I ain't gonna say never. Majority of the time, it's never a degree that's going to get you somewhere and, and guarantee your job when you get out of college because there's demand for it in four or five years. It's always some degree that everybody's doing. It's hot right now. It's saturated. you got a whole bunch of people going to college for this particular degree, and then you get out. And this is another subject, again, at, at hand, but it just, it just struck me since I'm going on this confidence stuff. You're so confident in this degree or CNA or whatever, that you're gonna um, that, that that you're gonna bet your life on it, basically, and you get out here and you might get a job, but most people don't get a job and they still have the debt because they did not prepare themselves or make a decision that would have put them got uh, themselves in a favorable position. So now you're in this position to where you have debt and you don't and you're not working the job that you don't that you want and so yeah so that's that's what uh that's why it's imperative to have a healthy level of confidence guys i know i didn't hit all sides because i didn't this video would have been an hour long if i would have hit all sides but i'm just talking about base level confidence and how confidence could uh keep you guys prepared for uh for life and to keep you guys prepared and, and, and to keep you guys ready and to keep you guys thinking in that stable mindset. It's that middle way. Not too confident, not underconfident. Don't be so underconfident that you count yourself out and you never see how things are going. You know what I'm saying? Don't don't be overconfident to where you're never prepared for if something goes wrong. So don't count yourself out before you try and don't be so stuck on nothing's going to go wrong just just you know don't 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 do that because when it does you're fucked so um, that that's about the point that I, that's really the point that I wanted to get to this video I know I said I wanted to go it's supposed to be 10 minutes but then you know me I'd be talking and then I said I wanted to push it to 15 shit I done did double that I done did 30 so so much for that so I don't I don't push 30 30 minutes man wow that goes to show I have a lot of knowledge and I have a lot to say, you know, and yep, I really work hard on this stuff. Let's see here. Yeah, that's pretty much, yeah, that's pretty much it. I didn't hit everything. Yep, I didn't hit everything that I want to hit. All right, you guys, that's it for tonight. Hope you guys enjoy. Uh, my name is Rashawn and I am out. I was down and I became a better me. My list yeah. of problems, kid you not, was longer than a sweater sleeve. Now I'm a boss, something they was thinking I would never be. No, no. Catch a flight and go to places I thought I would never see. My vision yeah. clear just like my future. Hey. Flex like I got super strength. Thought I always knew the way till I thought I.